Hey, welcome everyone. This week uh, we are super excited again for another webisode of the new Prime Time. I'm Nikhil from Media Smart, and before I start, I would like to thank AdTech for creating this opportunity today to discuss and engage upon a very interesting topic: the new Prime Time. The pandemic has redefined our lives in so many ways, from creating content to consuming content. Needless to say, it has also revamped our television viewing patterns. The television landscape has changed so significantly that lines between prime time and non-prime time have really blurred. Over the past 20 months, the concept of prime time has undergone a drastic change, especially with the Indian audience. Before OTT platforms came into this picture, the prime time used to be for a few hours between 7 to 11 p.m. or probably 8 to 10 p.m. on weekends, but it has now taken a very new meaning. Since everyone is homebound and spending a considerable time looking for video entertainment options, traditional TV viewing habits have been replaced by newer consumption habits, either on the small screen or on the big screens. Now, the on-demand content is captivating good viewership throughout the day, which means any time is the new prime time. With this, I would love to welcome our guest, Uma Talreja. Uma is a seasoned strategy and marketing professional and has been the CMO and head digital and e-commerce for many brands, including Raymond, Burger King, Aditya Birla Retail, and her last stint was with Shop and Stop. She has been an early adopter and ambassador for MarTech, digital and data-driven digital marketing. She's also currently an advisor for many startups, which she spoke to me about, and I'm super excited to welcome her and also hear from her. Welcome, Uma. How have you been? How is life post-pandemic? And uh, uh, personally and professionally, how is how are things at your end? I think it has been a mixed bag and much so for everybody, so not so different uh, for me. But I think uh, the two things that really stand out uh, for me, one, of course, is that it has created so many opportunities. Who would have thought that an adversity like this, which affected humanity across the world, would create so many opportunities and you would see growth in areas which you never expected and accelerated growth. And of course, digital being at the heart of it uh, all. I think the second, again, and you know, as cliched, but it's been a tremendous amount of self-discovery. So focus on self, focus on wellness has been tremendous. I just came back from a week-long detox uh, stay from, uh, you know, Atmantan at Murshi. Um, I think uh, I never thought that's the vacation I would be seeking. But yes, I think I totally enjoyed it. So I think it is a time where uh, you have the opportunity and you have uh, the environment to really focus on yourself, on, uh, you know, your goals, which go beyond your career goals, beyond your financial goals. And everybody must seize that opportunity uh, because there is so much to do out there for yourself now, which wasn't really as, uh, you know, accessible as before. Fantastic. Well, you've been a veteran and uh, I think people always look up to you, including myself on things to do probably on the marketing side and also non-marketing side. Probably that's another tip for uh, viewers. I mean, self-discovery is an important one and probably what you did, you could just uh, ping her and take notes and it's a very popular one, but um, great part to self-discovery, which gets us to a very interesting question now, which we usually start the session with is, I know that you're now currently uh, advising a lot of startups, and uh, but you've also been the face of one of India's largest uh, retail brand. I mean, the iconic shopper stop. What do you think defines the new prime time for the business that you're currently advising or leading, if you have any thoughts on that? I think uh, the shift is very definitive, right? I mean, on-demand content consum consumption, firstly, on your time. Second is the content that you choose. I think, therefore, prime time is no longer about the hour. And obviously, traditional TV rules are no longer existing for prime time now. I think to me, prime time in very simple terms is the prime audience. So who am I chasing really? Who am I actually targeting? In this for me, uh, in all of my uh, you know, uh, assignments, the first party data has been critical. I've run large databases and knowing that customer and serving that customer's preference has been of paramount importance. So I think it's the prime audience and it's the prime content, right? Because now I know what people are watching. I know how to actually target them with the content that they prefer, also during the content that they prefer. So I think it has been more about that, the audience focus and therefore the targeting, which is far more sharper. And therefore, 
how relevant you can be with the consumer. And I think the opportunities that are exploited in this, you know, right from content integration to, you know, the, the hosts actually coming on to my offline advertising to everything else that I could do around it, including having my own show, you know, within the platform, I think uh, has been tremendous. And I think therefore to me, it's these two words, it's the prime audience and the prime content. And therefore really it puts uh, relevance as the hero, right? More than anything else. So it's, it's not been so much about the reach. I think it's been more about the leverage. And it's been fantastic in terms of how you can drive awareness, but you can also look at how you convert your customers because the data really helps you to understand much more than what you could earlier. Good to hear that. I think, Uman, we were talking about this before the session that, you know, you've been such a seasoned veteran and, you know, how the prime time used to be, uh, uh, you know, getting your ad slot there in the seven to nine. And we come from those eras of advertising where you've arrived, your brand has arrived if you have, uh, got your ad slots in the prime time. Do you think that has significantly changed? And I think just the definition of the prime time uh, from a marketer's lens or for the new age budding marketers to look at the world very differently or are they already thinking differently? Yes, I think it has changed because I don't think the hour, I mean, there was a new uh, TV watching time, right? Which was important. Now that I think has shifted because it is really what you want to watch together as a family versus what you may choose to watch alone, right? And that's really what all of connected TV as well as OTT platforms and streaming has actually done. So here I think what has changed and, you know, we were talking about this before the call saying that while it's, you know, uh, IPL and Big Boss and there are many aspirational platforms, Actually, what happened is that because of connected TV, you got access to these platforms at a cost which was far more affordable for brands. But, you know, you're really using that to leverage it for audiences that only mattered. Otherwise, you know, it's only for the bigger brands and for very high cash burn, right? But now if I want to go after the shows that matter to my audience, I'm able to do that with uh, connected TV without really... Um, you know, burning a hole in the marketing budget. I mean, you can easily spend your entire marketing budget on that one, you know, um, uh, plan, media plan. And we all know how coveted it was and every marketing manager wants to have that in their plan. And when that cost comes to you from the agency, you know, it's an, okay, fine, let me move to, you know, something else. And let me, you know, let me not even think of KBC and let me not think of the others. So I think that has completely changed. There is uh, therefore, uh, you know, a whole... Uh, approachable plan that you can have, but you can still be on aspirational content, which is available, for, you know, for your consumers. Really good to know that. Um, that makes me get to my second question that, have you noticed any shifting consumer trends in regard to consumption pattern in India? And where do you think the digital advertising advancements or probably innovations are going towards? Do, is there anything specific that you have seen in recent times in lieu as a marketer or as a consumer? Uh, worthy of bringing it out here? I think the big shift that I see is that there is definite and you know whether it's as a marketer as a consumer is the same thing there is a multi-device consumption of everything so you know there are a lot of people that you would see and, and let's take an example if I took wellness and let's take a use case simply people going to the gym so you could easily start a show at home on your tv but you could carry it forward, you know, on a, on a treadmill or on an elliptical trainer on your mobile device. So I think that's definitely a behavior that, you know, connected TV and what you guys are doing helps you to leverage because now you can actually be on multi-device uh, platforms and, you know, you can continue the brand story much as customers continue the stories that were, you know, engaging them. So I think that's one. I think the second thing that has therefore shifted is, you know, this whole pattern of household watching. And yes, household watching may continue to exist, you know, in a, a country like India, because it has many other connotations, right? It is there's still dinner time television, even if it moves to a connected TV platform, there will be moments like that, which are important, right? But it always was about also hankering for the remote because, you know, there's one television who's going to watch that. So the individual consumption is a very big change right in uh, Indian uh, uh, watching behavior right of content and of uh, entertainment news everything so I think that's the second shift that can really be leveraged but more so I think what is happening is uh, is when you look at activities that can bring people together that have become very very important right so suddenly community and social etc has become very important and I feel that 
OTT and connected TV have the options. And you know, in 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 Shopper Stop, I always wish there was something that I could do where people could shop together because of connected TV, right? Okay. And because you could not go to the malls, and then you know, either whether it's couples or whether it's friends or whether it's uh, families who do go. and you know going to a mall and going to a store was a big activity now you don't want to make that group or you don't want to take your children along and there are so many considerations that you have you know limitations before that but if you could do that and you could really be able to exchange those ideas and exchange you know the opinions that you had on that shopping and enjoy it together as an activity much like gaming brought people together i think connected tv would have that potential you know in my mind and the minute you connect that to smart home and you connect that to so many other you know activities that are there which can be connected i think the potential is uh, tremendous i think it's fantastic i think um, uh, if you look at it connected tv is still at the end of the day a tv i mean what happened during covid uh, uma was that people had no resolute but to be in the four walls of their home and um, thanks to the internet revolution in india india has the cheapest data plan probably uh, top 5 at least uh, countries across the world and uh, smart TVs are no longer a, a premium that uh, some of us in SE, uh, different metropolitans or uh, probably only having affordable LG Samsung to be bought there are chinese manufacturers who can produce uh, televisions at 15000 or lesser you can buy it at a click of a button and install it at your home in within 2 days so what started happening was i mean i have internet i am at home why do what can i do more with it right and which is what led to the birth and the drastic growth of connected tvs and what happened suddenly was people who were on dth they realized hey so i want to watch ipl but i mean i want to watch it live i am doing it in mobile obviously i can't go out so i'm not mobile so why should i enjoy the spoil my experience on a small screen how do i display my screen or how can i see this and obviously the fire sticks uh and the amazon fire sticks and the google chrome cast played a big role uh while mitigating this and connected tv is actually taking the same path that actually got tv to mobile yeah. and then mobile to ott and now from ott people are saying why do i even want to see it on my mobile why don't i watch uh sacred games or whichever uh, netflix series that i want to watch on the large screen because i can and i think uh which is what has really made connected tvs like a buzzword and Uh, in US, it is uh, quite large. Uh, Uma, you know the share of mobile impressions is equivalent to the share of connected TV impressions. It goes to three fourths of all television households. Uh, the advertising has grown by seventy percent even during the COVID period. So I think it has been a real reckoning. Uh, and I think where advertising are find finding their solace is, oh, finally I can put my ad on the large screen and I can track it. Oh, great! And you can tell me who all saw it. uh and i can uh, do a frequency capping i can control which house where where and i think that's been a real uh, relief and i hope it continues to grow i mean uh, that's that's my thought on it i think that, uh, the potential is large but you know there are i could say what what do i really miss right so when i handle my e-commerce platform what i miss was the clickability of being able to shop and i'm sure that you know there will be a technology which kind of helps you to solve that in the but there already is now so i think that's the beauty of connected tv because when you put an ad on connected tv you can actually code the connected tv ad you can actually put a connected tv ad with qr codes you can click an sms and fire a thing in fact now we have a technology at least in our my organization which is media smart as we have household sync where you can actually sync the ads that are displayed on connected tv by identifying the ip of the household and make the user take an action so while you enjoy great uh, video completion rates on whichever platform and otts are a execution uh, medium to the ctv it can be on live news it can be on games people play games on uh, connected tv and then you can al- allocate the ip address retarget the users on the same household to the ip address and actually take them perform an action so That's what right. happens with ctv and household sync now is that you get a completion rate on the large screen you give the beautiful ad experience on this hd smart tv and then you followed up with an ad and you also get real time consumer intent in fact for the longest time we were all doing dlis right i mean that's the only metric of success how we all <laughs> we've all been there uma i mean yeah. i will not challenge that i mean it's a 150 people respondents which determines the success of the 10 million people who saw the ad but i actually feel the household sync does a better job because he saw your ad on the large screen and then he sees your ad on the mobile screen on the last screen he doesn't have an action to perform like you rightly pointed out he cannot click he cannot close he cannot change um, 
super important. What does he do with it? He has to see the ad. Now, when you retarget the ad on his mobile, suddenly you've shifted the power to him. He can close the ad. He can close the app. He can not even see your ad. And a very interesting example that we recently saw with an OEM was they had great completion rates on the connected TV and we were very happy and applauding. Wow, we are a great platform. We ran the same ad on uh, the retargeting half an hour, one hour, two hours later, whenever we, the advertiser wanted. The completion rates swapped down to almost 55% cause of great concern, uh, obviously. But then when we started re-looking at the data, we saw the CTRs were close to 2.5%. Wow. Which basically meant that the user actually liked your ad. Don't get it wrong. He doesn't want to see your ad again on mobile. He wants to engage with the ad. He they actually went on the website. Great click-throughs, great website visits, actually purchasing the mobile, which is a phenomenal success. And I think when technologies start to marry this, it becomes a great marriage, actually. And uh, we no, wish we could do that with, for you, our chopper stop. <laughs> it brings this thought to me. I mean, you know, very often I know that as marketers, we're very tempted to say, okay, you know what determines the strategy? You know, the consumer determines my strategy. But this is truly an empowered customer experience in that sense. And I think that's what is beautiful about it, right? It really does put the brand in the customer's hands, literally, right? But you can experience the brand in every way that you like and it doesn't really therefore take away from what you're doing right it's not in, it's not interfering it yes it's it's integrating and i think it's fabulous yeah and once you have the mobile id you yeah. can drive to store you can do so many other things that you want to do because now you've got the large screen tv versus the user id which has been a norm for all of us for a while uh, so i think that's what is exciting that gets me to my last question it's an, sorry i extended that last question a little bit <laughs> But what do you think? I mean, do you think connected TV advertising is the next big thing in Indian market? And why I'm asking you this is, Uma, you have seen many trends over your uh, 15, 20 years of marketing that something came as a fad. And then you said, yeah, hang on. I'll see the next trend. Do you think connected TV advertising is going to become like the next big thing? See, I think digital transformation has been proliferant in every aspect you know, of life and industry in general. But However, it's the most disrupted, right, is the media and the marketing space. So I think that is here to stay. There's no doubt about that, right? In terms of really looking at connective TV, why there is a smart TV in terms of how many get added, but then it's aided by the Chromecast, it aided by Fire Stick, etc. So yes, it will grow and it will be a higher growth category. And I think that if we see and, you know, when we've surveyed our own consumers across various organizations, I would say, the number of people who enter, right, without any satellite connection is also increasing. So I think there will be a trend. Does it mean to say that in the next five years, you will see traditional TV lose uh, relevance? Probably not. But I think we will see a few surprises, right? Because we already know that, for example, influencers play a larger role in tier two, tier three town, you know, then actual advertising, you know, probably does for many brands today in terms of really getting acquisition. This is already digital consumption of media, right, and of content, and how this actually, uh, you know, grows because if there are fifteen thousand rupee televisions, and if there is digital sensitivity, and as the internet, you know, uh, capability grows, I think the growth will come from real India, and therefore I think the 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 headroom is so large for connected TV to grow that it has no option but to grow, right? It is no option. I mean, it cannot go down. It can only go up. The question is how fast it will grow. I think there, a lot of the platforms which are on this, you know, your OTT platforms and your video platforms, etc., will have a large role to play. How, uh, you know, well they fashion their content and how they actually make it more customized and regional and so many other things will have a large role to play. And I think it's going to be a segment which is a very fast growing segment for, for you know, at least a decade to come. All right, fantastic. Uh, thank you, Uma, for uh, this, this amazing round of knowledge and uh, so many insights that you threw upon, really to ponder upon for our viewers as well as for us. But that gets me to my next section, which is called the rapid fire round. Uh, I promised I will uh, obviously stick to the rules of the hamper, but I never promised that I'll be as good as the guy who invented this game, who we know who it is. But uh, let's try to keep it fun. Are you ready for, and you have to answer in like a short period of time. You can't take a time. We are, are we aligned? You know, uh, it's very easy to hide on a camera. So it's okay. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> all right so we'll we'll so easy to hide on that uh, couch but it's so easy to hide yeah, i mean uh, as, that, that's getting telecasted to almost the same audience so don't worry so hopefully we have the same set of audience watching so my first question is simple did you watch the olympics with your family and if so did you watch it on sony live or did you watch it on sony 10 the channel so i watched some of it but i watched it alone and i watched it on sony live Mm, so you are an OTT person, not really the DTH person. Interesting. There is no, uh, I mean, if I can add, but though it's not right, there's uh, even there's no DTH in my house, and uh, you know my parents live with me, both senior citizens above seventy, and uh, they don't have DTH either. Wow, guys, I think this is probably the most revealing insight. Which when this goes out, everybody's gonna be talking about it. That a CTV user. and the age group is while you thought it was all gen z and millennials clearly that's breaking the myth uh, we have a house help she uses a phone and she's watching ott as well as youtube and videos all through the day while she's doing what she's supposed to do or cooking etc uh, my my dad and mom both there's no dth uh, any more it's been years actually since uh, they use a uh, fire stick wow yeah. hello guys i mean if you're not taking insights and notes here probably you need to really look at how you're defining your audience they okay. even we have a, a second home in pune which my they carry their fire stick to pune when they go they still don't use the dtsc evolved 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 users my second question rapid fire in the next 3 years where do you foresee the tv watching consumer base comfortably scaling and consuming their prime time tata sky or amazon fire stick i think i know the answer but yeah oh, i think it's going to be the amazon fire stick i'm very sorry if i have heard tata sky but and especially if i have to take the 150 sample size approach to what we have always used for measurement then i have 300 women on a whatsapp group from my building who are crying about tata sky all the time so yeah <laughs> All right, that adds a nice layer to the fireside chat and this rapid fire round. Uh, my third question is the future of revenues, according to you, Uma, for omni-channel conglomerates. To give you an example, is this going to be the future of revenues? Will it going to be coming from Z five or the Z television network? Where do you think that the future of the revenues is actually? I think that uh, subscription will still be challenging in terms of getting revenues, but in terms of really looking at advertise based or uh, the free so uh, channel scale up, I think definitely it would be from you know Z five and not the network and other such uh, you know players. Yeah, I think the Z network is pretty large though. I mean they have Z Bangla and there's so all language channels. Do you think? And it's a great insight actually that you're saying that Z five as a as an online channel is going to become larger on revenues uh, with as compared to their entire network of television channels exciting um next question ctv advertising future will be lying within the programmatic buying ecosystem or do you think as we know in india everything is a direct buy and even if you do programmatic you have 20 people doing it so where do you think the future of connected tv advertising will lie i think the future is in programmatic and i know that today there are direct tv deals which take place but i think eventually as you know marketing gets more and more connected i think marketers will need to lean on programmatic because it will be difficult for them to manage direct buys across so many channels and to connect the dots between so many channels i think the beauty of connected tv is the omni channel marketing opportunity that you have and i think is best leveraged through programmatic all right my last two questions future who will rule the consumer's choice of 2025 D to C brands or CPG uh, legacy CPG brands. I think it will be D to C brands. All right, and my last question: Where do you think these growing startups, uh, which have high valuations and funding, do you think they will continue to uh, spend across the usual linear forms of advertising, or probably do you think a massive shift happening towards online? and digital first uh, brands as spends i think um, i think that these brands uh, yes they do have the flexibility and the freedom and the funding which is available to them at present and there's no harm in dreaming big and it is great that they have to dream big and they go on to platforms but i think the pressure of measurement will soon come 
as well so with so many brands entering the market and so many uh, you know going to be unicorns i think that there will be a tightening of sorts in terms of you know how one will be different in their strategy from the other how one can deliver results probably differently from the other and how are you going to really demonstrate i mean i think everybody is aiming right now you know for the traditional mind space if i were to say right because you're not aiming for any other goals i think all your launch goals are around that who can capture the imagination of the consumer and who can capture more consumers at least for a trial you know faster and who can be a name to reckon with faster but i think that these goals will soon get sharpened because as you have to differentiate one from the other and you know there will be brands entering the same space and you're seeing that for example take beauty i mean the number of brands that are entering the beauty space is it's like everybody thinks of a brand daily so how is that going to really uh, you know change in terms of how investors and how other stakeholders look at it i think is going to become important and therefore measurement will become important fantastic with that uma thank you so so much for coming to the new prime time and uh, it was so insightful to have you here uh, i wish you the very very best uh, in all your travel scheme of things in all your interesting time that you're giving so much knowledge to these startups and uh, i i hope to connect with you over a coffee sometime soon when the world is a lot more normal thank you uma thank you thanks nikhil